we're going to sleep. <laughs> oh, we start like that. <laughs> this is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. We're in Maryland, USA. It's very nice around here, isn't it, Frank? Wonderful, and the weather is actually amazing right now. I mean, the only issue is the pool shut yeah. at this hotel, so it's a bit of a nightmare. Not that I get much time in the pool, but I thought I'd, you know, I saw it on the internet, and I thought it's about 80 degrees, get out there, but it wasn't to be. Mm. I had a little storm yesterday, if we can call it that. Yeah. I got a, a notification on my phone yeah. saying, get like into shelter tornado. now. Huh? It was a tornado. Well, what was it? Like a mini tornado, isn't that what the warning said? That's what the warning said, yeah. but when I looked outside the window, it, it wasn't that was, bad. Yeah, but it was like, when it went from sunny to just... It was dark? Yeah, yeah to like, yeah. It lasted about 25 minutes and then it was sunny again. Yeah, I don't really get it. Yeah. Quite concerning. But I was speaking to Daniel's Global guys. warning, sorry. Speaking to Daniel's guys, who are from mm. Florida, who live in Florida, and they said that was just like a little wind. Like if you came to Florida, it, it's just like, that's nothing. Really? Yeah. No, I don't know. Not sure I could deal with it. How do you get like you're wearing shorts walking around? How do you put up with a day changing like that? Mm. Changes your mood completely. Well, we don't get to see that in the UK, so for us, we get rain, thing. don't we? Yeah. So we that's what we're used to. I want to talk to you about that interview you did with Coogan in Vegas. Which one? The oh, one what, Foley. Yeah. That was that was in in like the hotel <laughs> like it's like in the elevator shaft bit. It's just bizarre. What's going on? Well. We thought it was about midnight and we were just waiting for people to come out of the lift and we pretended that we were doing a um like an ESPN live show. Or design live show. <laughs> so we were like, Come and talk to us, you're live on you're live on our, our on our late night show and some people were like, No, I'm not supposed to be in Vegas. Uh, and yeah, I pretended that there was a football match and Foley, great player. That woman really bought into it as well. She did, yeah, but I think she was just being polite, to be honest. Or there is actually a team called the Washington Wonderhawks or whatever they were called. <laughs> that does sound pretty it realistic. Was, it was quite right? off the cuff. Okay, well, I've said uh, we're going to do a Q&A. So we ain't got there. many questions though, to be no. honest. No, 16 re replies. Is that all? That's 22. Bad times. And probably like 14 of them are just people being arsed off. One? Yeah. There's, should we start with that one? Yeah, go on then. It's not even a question, is it? Nobody gives a fuck, sorry, no disrespect, but Eddie is the man, and of course Bazza. But you can't tell me Frank Pizza Boy Smith actually has a real input. For your information, I ain't Dave from Barnsley, I'm Lee from Dorset, if you want to name me, dot, dot, dot. Hi, Lee from Dorset. <laughs> what are you doing today? <laughs> to be honest, I have no input. Okay, Thank you very much, you. see you later. Um, I have no input whatsoever, Lee. If that makes you happy, then please just, that's cool. Actually, there's another one uh, yeah. from Prince Patel, but I think it's a fake it's not, Prince It can't Patel. be the Prince Patel. <laughs> Is that the Frank with shit spots? Yeah. To be fair, my skin's all right at the minute. I've, um, you're going to zoom in? Yeah. yeah. Just zoom in, like, on one. <laughs> like, uh, I've been using this new little regime. It's going, it's, it's going all right. But... Thank, thanks for your, who said that print, what was his name? Lookman Prince Patel. Lookman Prince Patel, <laughs> thanks. With the dick emoji. <laughs> With the dick emoji. I mean, these people, it's quite funny really, you gotta laugh. Right, let's get to the actual questions. Um, this is from Big Right Hook. Do Matram ever make a loss on a show in order to build a bigger, more profitable event in the future? For example, when building a new fighter's profile, uh, or does that every show have to hurt? make money oh, that wasn't really brilliant but does every show have to make money basically but we're a business so ideally we, we like the business to make money but obviously at the same time we invest in, in invest in people we believe in so you know we've invested in shows before haven't you know and lost money and it's worked in the long run sometimes it doesn't work you invest in someone and it's a sport and it doesn't go to plan but you know our main focus as any business otherwise it wouldn't be possible is to try and make money um, but yeah, we, we do invest in fighters, obviously. Right, this is from Callum Smith, not the actual Callum no. Smith. Um, what would Frank consider a go-to meal deal? <laughs> That's like a fat question, isn't it? Uh, probably like a ham and coleslaw, probably an M&S meal deal. Ham and coleslaw sandwich, 
um, good calorie intake on that. Um, pack a month to munch, pickled onion. Same as Eddie? Yeah. I didn't copy him though. I ate those years ago before I even knew him. Um, what did you get in the middle? Did you get a Kit Kat in there? What, me? No, but can you get can you get chocolate in the middle? No, I thought it was just a sandwich, crisps and a drink, right? Okay, so ham coleslaw sandwich, pickled onion month to munch, and a uh, bottle of still water. But are you saying you had a Kit Kat in there anyways? Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I just changed it, I should mix up the middle. Uh, from Liam Williams, again, not the boxer not Liam, Liam Williams, Williams, but uh, what's your best experience in boxing to date? You know what? I couldn't single out one moment. I think we've done so much over the over the years. You know, I've been in boxing now for been in the business in our business for eleven years. Been in boxing for about eight years. It's very difficult to single out and a moment. I think nights like the Wembley shows, you know, where you walk out and you think, bloody hell, this is a big deal. Mm. That's where you really realise the magnitude of what you're doing. But you know, every night's got its own its own memory from so it's you know and we've been lucky enough to do a lot of huge nights okay this is from ben griffo 1997 past or present matron fighters pick three fighters who'd want who do you want to defend you <laughs> uh chris eubank senior um who else bellew bellew's got to be in there um who else? Dylan. <laughs> Dylan would be good. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I'd, could I take them all? Yeah. It'd be like a Fantastic Four movie. You know, like we all just we all just come running and running in. I'd be at the back. Yeah, of course. I'd have like a sort of wall, and I'd be at the back. <laughs> sorry, can't. Oh, that's a weird. No. Sorry, it literally is. Sorry. Hi, sorry. <laughs> Do you chill with you, Bank Junior and Senior? Uh, yeah, I see him every now and then. I don't see many people because I'm always travelling. But yeah, I'm sure I catch up with him sometimes. Edward Mark John, chances of Campbell Lomachenko at the KC Stadium and Hull? Yeah, we're looking at options at the minute. We're looking at that's a possibility, London, you know, there's a, there's a number of uh, options that we're looking at. I think we'll, we'll, we'll see more details in the next few weeks. Um, that one of the issues, obviously, football fixtures, mm. so they don't come out yet. So there's a, there's there's a lot of things to factor in, but we are looking at that possibly. Lomachenko in a hole. He'd love it, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually with Luke Campbell. We went for lunch the other day, and uh, we were talking about when he fought at the at Craven Park, which is the rugby stadium. Yeah, yeah. And there, there's only three sides of the stands, so the rain. And we we did a show there once. The rain and the wind coming in straight off the off the from the water coming in, it was like nothing you've ever. It was like that tornado the other day. <laughs> Great boxing conditions. Oh, you got a positive comment from what? Matt Twenty Four. Not a question, but keep up the good work. Thanks, Matt Twenty Four. You could can you chat to the other guys that we started with, Matt Twenty Four, and just you know, give him some positive outlook on life. <laughs> Yusuf, are we going to see you start beef again with Oscar De La Hoya? Do you know what? When I did that, I didn't realise that the camera was on me because, like, it was obviously on the, the screen behind screen, me, yeah. and I'm like a little school kid. I'm like, <laughs> and then afterwards, I see the clip, and it's behind. And I remember like, looking at him, and he's probably thinking, "Who the fuck is this little fat fuck?" <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> so I'm sure you know if we get if we make some more fights down the road, which is possible, and uh, Eddie Eddie lets me up there, I'll. I'll uh, We'll have another go with Oscar. Again, he'll still be thinking, who is this little shit? Well, Eddie said he wants to do like a matchroom v Golden Boy card, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we've got a lot of fights we can make. Um, and obviously being on the same platform, the zone, mm. will make that really easy to do. And I think it adds another dimension to it. This is from Ryan. What process is in place to make sure StubHub sells the first-hand tickets as first-hand tickets and not directly to the secondary market? Groups like Viagogo have done similar in the past. We have a contract with them that all tickets are sold at face value. Um, they can't be sold above face value. Uh, we're the seller of the tickets. So, you know, we use them as like as basically a primary box office. So the likes of Ticketmaster, you mm -hmm. see, 
Um, we utilize StubHub in the same way and we have a partnership with them. Um, so that's in our contract, we sell tickets at face value only. So that is basically, no. that's how it's always worked, that's how it always will work with us. This topic always comes up though, and it's a, it's a weird one because if there's enough demand for any event, mm. it's always gonna go onto that secondary market. Yeah, I mean, like, you can't, you can't start, also, I've always said, it's not, unfortunately, it isn't illegal. So, it's just like you buying a product and going, I'm gonna go and sell this because it's in demand mm. for 20% more. People do it. Yeah, if, like, if every it doesn't sell, then you keep same. it. Yeah. yeah. Every business is the same, you know, and but and it is now a business for people. People buy tickets for something and resell them, you know. Whether that's right or wrong, you can't stop it. That's another debate. Yeah, exactly. But it's like any product. It's like you buy this camera and you might be able to sell it for ten percent more. Well done to you. you made ten percent like that. And then get a new one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I understand people's mentality, but it, it happens in everything. It's not just boxing. No. It's concerts, in, yeah, concerts, up. sports, like everything. The only thing it's it's restricted in is football, football because, because of, of the violence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like that is why it's illegal in football. No other reason. It's not illegal in football because they want to stop people from making money on tickets. It's illegal in football because of the violence. So, you know, look, we, we as I say, we work with StubHub, face value. They're a primary box office seller for us. They have a secondary part of their website, and that will exist anyway. Just like it will exist, Ticketmaster have a version of it, have a resale platform. All of the box offices, or ninety percent of them, will have a resale platform. So, you know, but it's a topic that always seems to come up. To be honest, though, it, you can argue it either way. It's good to kind of have this because even in football, if you go down any football ground, especially in the Premier League, before a game, half an hour before a game, there will be thousands of ticket touts there mm. doing it illegally. So, if you took that away from boxing. You probably see the same outside the O2, yeah. um, what about outside the MEN, etc. Yeah, you're never gonna. I, I thought I'd, I'd find it. I think it's very difficult for them to try and change the way the way it works. That's on a global scale as well. You know, every every event globally mm. has this. You, know, you want to go to the World Cup. You want to go to Tottenham, uh, Liverpool in the Champions League final and buy a ticket off a town. Mm. You know, so. Um, yeah, it's, inter- it's always an interesting discussion point, but our, our position doesn't change on it. No, because you guys aren't doing anything wrong. No. But um, if the laws did change, I can see why there's an argument for that as well, because for some fans, I guess, it's not great where they, they're being forced, even though it's legal, they're being, paid to, uh, they're being asked to pay more, basically, for tickets. I understand what you're saying, but you could then put that to every single business that is in existence. <laughs> uh, you buy a pair of trainers, Yeezys for example, Yeah. they're 300 quid, you can't get them anywhere. So they're now 600 quid. It's supply and demand, isn't it? I'm not saying it's your like, I'm not, but that is the difficulty with it if you look at it from the other angle. Every other business operates in that way. That t-shirt costs someone two pounds to make, they sell it for a hundred pounds. Is that right or wrong? Well, just how the world works, yeah. isn't it? Just business. So, I just think it's, you know, it's a tough one, isn't it? Okay, uh, this is from Shivan. What's it like working for Matram? And who's his favourite boxer besides Joshua? Assuming Joshua is your favourite boxer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. Um, great place to work. I've, I've said it quite a few times. You know, I've been lucky enough. been there 11 years. I worked through all of our, well, quite a few of our divisions of sports and got grounding in literally doing everything. Like the guy said earlier, pizza boy. Yeah, I was a pizza boy. But, you know, that helped me work my way through. So, it's a great business to be at, and you know, Eddie's obviously great, but Barry has like, gave me an opportunity as well. Eddie gave me the opportunity to come in, and, and Barry's always been great. He's let me be involved in meetings from the age of like 15, 16, that you probably I didn't have a clue what was going on, but I sat there, listened, took it all in. Um, so yeah, that, that's a it's, a, it's been an enjoyable experience, and I, do, I love it, still love it now. So, favorite boxer? I don't really have a favorite boxer. You know, they're all all have different relationships. Some people I know better. They say about Anthony Joshua. I've known him since he turned pro. I think I took him, went with him for his first medicals. 
Cal Yafai, Luke Campbell, a lot of those guys, because I think similar age to those guys, you know, when they turned turned pro, I was that's when I really started working in there. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those younger guys who've come through get on well with. Um, but yeah, no, we good relationship with all of our fighters, and they're they're like mates as well, which is good because you can be open to them and be upfront and honest, which is always good. Absolutely. Um, what else have we got? Jay, with Crawler and Quig coming towards the end of their careers, who are the next generation of Manchester fighters Matram are planning to build around? Hopefully a huge Manchester bill at the end of this year. Great work, fellas. You guys are going to Manchester in the summer, though, aren't you? Yeah, we, we're announcing a few bits today. I mean, by the time this comes out, I'm sure we would have been out. So we're announcing Scott Fitzgerald, or now, I will say, we've just announced Scott, Fit Scott Fitzgerald and Brian Rose right. for the July 6th show. Good fight. Um, great, yeah, really good fight. Um, we're announcing Lawrence Acoli, Jack Massey. Oh, another good fight. Which is a good fight. Um, and we're working on a few other bits for that card, and we'll, we'll keep everyone up, you know updated on that. But you know, up obviously you got all around the area, Manchester, Liverpool. We're, we're going to build some more fighters up there. Uh, we're now working on our plans for September through to December, um, and we're, we're going to put a lot, a lot of plans in place there. So. You know, we'll, we'll carry on coming to those markets and we're looking at new places to go to as well. All right, that explains why uh, Akoli and Jack Massey were having a bit of beef onto it the other day. <laughs> <laughs> it's teamed up with uh, Shane McGuigan as well, Lawrence. Mm. Interesting move. Yeah, I think it would be good for him. I spoke, uh, again, with Luke Campbell the other day. He said you can already see the improvements. That, you know, it's been a couple of weeks now, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Lawrence really needs to get settled with someone now. You know, he's been... He was obviously with Brian Lawrence to begin with. Brian Johnson. Brian, yeah. Is that his son? Yeah. I got it wrong. Uh, Brian to begin with, then he Barry joined, Robinson. joined Barry Robinson, yeah. And now obviously with Shane. I think Shane's got a good you know, team of fighters there, so it'll be good for him. And uh, got some good sparring the other day. You saw the, saw the pictures. He was with, uh, I think, Daniel Dubois. Yes, sparring. he's down at McGuinn's gym. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it'll be good to see him come back, you know. He um you can fo really focus there and 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 carry on learning. So should be a good fight. Connor Kieran, this is quite a personal question. What's Frank's salary? <laughs> don't know. I don't get paid. I'm still on work experience. <laughs> I think that's about it. What else have we got? Oh, we've got another hate comment. That's a, that's a bit scary, isn't it? That we only got twenty two. Oh. Well, How many Twitter? followers have you got? Eight thousand. Oh, that's not that's good. Not great, though, is it? You should have put it on IFLs. Mm. Yeah, I've got access to that as well. That was, I thought we Coogan normally retweets it, so it's got to be it's bothered. Coog it's Coogan's fault. No. Maybe he doesn't want you to succeed. <laughs> sure. <about that>. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't have sent me out here otherwise. Um, Maybe he doesn't want you to take the limelight because he feels like you're taking the limelight from him. It's a team, team effort. <laughs> <laughs> from Emmanuel, what do you actually do? <laughs> question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> Uh, right, simple terms. Just really fly around the world, speak to Umar. Um, Tough life. Uh, no, I so I oversee sort of all all of our business development, financial side, contractual side with our legal team. Um, basically, everything. I work across our whole business, our whole boxing business. So we've got thirty odd staff now. So yeah, yeah, around the world. So manage the day to day, you know, manage all of, all of those teams. Um, look at how we can carry on building, growing new markets, new events, and work with our broadcast partners. So obviously Sky, the Zone. Work with our sponsors. Um, work with the fighters. Everything basically. Not so I do everything. Because we have a big team of people and you know, a good team of people who do a lot of work, but I, I sit across everything we do. Just oversee everything. Then. Yeah. So I, I, you know, work with Eddie, and then I'm also just recently gone onto the board of Matrim Sport, which is our holding company, uh, our parent company. Um, so now we'll look at the, our other sports as well, and and see what you know, see what we're doing there. And we're lucky because we do so many events, we can take things from certain shows and say this worked here let's try that in 
darts, or let's take something from darts and try it in boxing. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what I do. It's very difficult to explain what you do, isn't it? You know, well, when you do what, what you when you do what you do, <laughs> like every day, from when I wake up to when I go to bed, yeah. I'm doing something. But it's very hard to put that into words mm. of what that something is all day. It can be a variety of things, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So signing new fighters' contracts, uh, working working with venues, where as I say, working with broadcast partners, budgets, everything. Mm. It's good fun, though. not a proper job. So within the UK team of Matchroom, you've obviously got Eddie and Barry and yourself, and then behind that you've got Matchmaker and Paul Reddy. Yep. And then who else is in the team? You've got Dan Barnard doing the media stuff, but then who else is involved, really? So we've got 16 people in our UK team. So as you say, Eddie, myself, um, you've got Ross Garrity, oh, who's yeah. our head of yeah. international markets, so he'll, or European markets, so he started looking after Italy. He also still, he looks after our sponsorship elements, right. um, so works with our sponsorship uh, partners. You got, as you say, Paul Reedy, our matchmaker. You got John Hill, who heads up our event operations. So I really like the day to day with the venues, set up, working with our broadcast partners on the production. Um, then you've got, I'm actually going through the offices, so I don't forget anyone. Then uh, you've got Karen Mazzoni, who's been there about 35 years. So she's like the mother hen of the office. <laughs> she makes sure everyone's behaving, but she's, you know, she's. Uh, Eddie's PA, but also looks after all the or oversees all the travel, logistics, everything like that. Alex works with her on that. Bella work, is, looks after our ticketing. Mandy works on the finance side. Um, again, she's been there over twenty odd years. They don't look old enough to have been there that long enough. Mandy and uh, Karen. Then the next office we've got a media office. So you've got Dan Barnard heads up our heads up our media. Um, Scott Hamilton, Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. all our social, social and digital. Media. Got Mason, does our content. You got Adams, our designer. Is he the new guy? Yeah, yeah. So he does all our uh, videography content. Adams, our new designer. We got another guy called Jamie joining, who's working on the social side. Uh, you got Darren, is is our head of logistics. Oh yeah, I know Darren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Darren. Um, yeah, so it's a busy team there. Then you got our New York office. And our Italy office. Mm. So there's been a couple of social media, like people added. So yeah. you're going heavy on that. Yeah, obviously. Look, everyone knows it's a huge part of our business, um, and we're as you've probably seen, our YouTube content is really developing with now. Josh Denzel. Yeah, we're putting together the Born Fighter stuff. We obviously do the um, the Before the Bell programming, the the uh, the Wayne programming, the press conference program. So it's very important to us and. You know, we want to grow our own content and we have the best access well, nearly as good as your access you, you've got better access than us um, but that's a big part for us so we're investing heavily in that uh, and you know, making sure we're providing the right content and that, our job is to promote the guy, all of these fighters mm. so that's a big part of it okay. Frank, uh, I want to ask you about Deontay Wilder mm. um, I don't think anyone in the media asked you or had a chance to ask you about his comments before the Brazil fight where he said um, he's happy to take a body because it's legal. Yeah, it's not really in the spirit of it, is it? Uh, it's, not, it's not really something you want to hear, is it? You know, It's all well and good talking up a fight, but I'm sure now he looks back on it, thinking about it, it was part of it, or he's hyped up. But you know, it's not something you really want to hear, especially in this business, mm -hmm. um, because you see some of the things that have happened in the past. So, look, that's for him to. I don't know if he's come out, apologised. He was uh, very gracious with Brazil afterwards. Yeah, but it's strange. Like that's what I don't. So he probably was doing it to hype up the fight, but the problem with that is, God forbid, say he went in there and actually did kill Brazil. Yeah. What would he sort of, or how would he feel afterwards? Yeah, I mean, you just, I don't think it's one to, you should really talk about, is it? Because it's a possibility in this, is it, well, in a lot of sports, you know, people 
it have you know unfortunately in a, in a lot of sports things like that can happen so you shouldn't joke about mm. it you shouldn't I don't think you should use it as a way to hype up a fight I think it's wrong but no. I couldn't imagine really thinking throughout all weights and your high profile fights I can't really imagine anyone else saying that no because I don't because I think people understand it both ways you know like you wouldn't want someone to say it about you mm. so uh, look you can't really go into too much. I think I think it's wrong that he said it. Um, so okay. I don't think anyone should say anything like that. Anyways, what did you make of uh, well the fight only lasted Brilliant. one round? He was, he was great. But that's why he's exciting, isn't it? Um, I think Brazil caught him, didn't he? When he went in for that, yeah, when yeah. he sort of. I think that's all, always the side of Wilder that is questionable. We've seen Ortiz yeah. at him, seen Tyson Fury at him, now yeah. Brazil. So it's possible. But he's always stood up. So. Yeah, yeah, no, but, you know, that's that's great. So it, it only builds up the AJ fight. AJ's got to do the job uh, next week, and I'm sure he'll do it in very impress impressive fashion as well. But Deontay did what he needed to do. He backed up his, his talk. Um, so well done to him. I spoke to Eddie yesterday, and he's kind of downbeat about it because people behind Wilder have been saying you've got Kalnaki fight tied up Ortiz fights done mm. so when you take that into consideration you might be looking at 2021 till we see that fight and that's assuming they both remain undefeated yeah I, I think I think the fight should happen sooner rather than that but he's got his own plans whether uh, AJ wants it as you know as everyone keeps saying but uh I'd maybe I don't know what the reason is behind it it's very strange don't you think yeah because it, it's like Joshua saying I want a rematch with Povetkin mm. the way Wilder is saying it with Ortiz now I know that was a brilliant fight Wilder Ortiz but he's done it though he's what it's like put it in the box you, you beat him mm. he's had over 40 knockouts he's only had one draw mm. um, why wouldn't you want to become the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world I don't get it I'm at the right weight to try and do it. <laughs> but that is like, that's that's the pinnacle, isn't it? You know, well, a pinnacle anyway, but especially a heavyweight, to do that, mm. unbelievable. Why wouldn't you want to do it? I don't quite understand it. But he's, I'm sure he's got his own reasons, which we just don't know about. I don't know whether it's him or, the, it seems like the people behind him are just, because he always goes on about like, Fighters should have their own route, etc. There should be control, but it does seem like he's being controlled at the moment. Mm. Uh, again, I, I, I just, I just don't know. Maybe he's making decisions. Like AJ makes his own decisions. We work with him, we advise him, we. Have, but it's always he's the boss, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but that's how it should be. He's the one getting in there. Well, that's what actually Barry was saying in a press conference. Yeah. You know, in the dinner and white yeah, thing, yeah. where. You know, people suggesting there was some racial element to it. It, 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 it wasn't like that at all. You're only thinking that if you, if you know, if you've actually got a bit of racial sort of thing in you, because all he was saying is that we used to control the fighters back no, in the day, and now the, the fighters are control. Even Dylan White, he, yeah. he's he's calling the shots, um, yeah. and of course Joshua called the shots. But every fighter should be like that. Like every fight, well, it like, depends just what no, level no, you're no, at. No, but they, but they can all call their own shit. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, they can always say, you "Now what? Don't want to do it anymore." or I don't want to fight and then they've made the decision mm. like, we're not the ones getting in there but we know what we're doing when it comes to building promoting going the right route so obviously that's why we're in these guys teams because that's our job to deliver that side of it but they should make the, the decisions mm. no one else yeah I mean it's from what Joshua was saying it seems like after this Ruiz fight touch when he comes through it that's all he wants, all he's interested in. Mm. But you need both sides to play ball. Mm. So. We'll see what happens. Um, but there's, listen, there's still other fights. You've got Uzik. Um, Uzik's great. You've got, you know, you've got other ones like Pulev. Pulev will be probably IBF called mandatory. IBF. Yeah. Dillian White's a possibility. You know, like there, there is other fights out there. But I think in his mind, obviously, you, he wants the biggest fights. Mm. So. 
you mentioned Dillian White, what have you made of all this talk with him and Tyson Fury, WBC ordering it, Tyson Fury saying if you make it with the diamond belt, I'll go and knock him out. It's a good fight though, him and Dillian, massive great fight. Great fight, huge fight. Dillian wants it, he's fighting uh, Schwartz, isn't June it? 15. June 15th. Dillian's got his fight, July 20th, Rivas, it's a tough fight as well. Um, so yeah, that's a massive fight, isn't it? Let's see what happens with it. Well, there's a chance if, well, either the WBC can make White Rivas uh, for an interim, interim WBC yeah. title, or they could say if White beats Rivas, then you've got to fight Fury for okay, Wilder. Yeah. Again, I said this the other day while I was speaking to Coogan. He shouldn't, Dillian shouldn't have to, like, he's done everything he needs to do and more mm. to, to get the. Tyson Wilder. said the exact same thing. Yeah. But that doesn't take a. He, he will fight Tyson Fury, as he said. But if you step back, he has done more than enough to get his shot, mm. you know. But the Fury fight's massive. Yeah. But I don't know what Fury's plans are. Well, it was kind of like unrealistic because Tyson was saying no one's going to order me about, um, you know, I've already fought for the WBC title, I'll do my own thing. And, you know, it, it didn't seem like it was happened. But then Tyson obviously come out with that video mm. and said, actually, let's just get it on. Mm. Um, so now it, it, there's a there's a slight chance that fight could actually happen. Yeah. Realize. Massive. Where would it happen though? I'm not going to say. <laughs> where, where would that happen though? Really, it'd probably be in the states, wouldn't it? I think it's a, I think it's a UK fight. Well, it should be. It's two UK fighters, but he's got his uh, unless ESPN are okay with him boxing mm. uh, in the UK. Then yeah. Who knows? Although it probably goes to purse bid, so it might not even be on ESPN. Hmm. That'd be a fun purse bid. <laughs> yeah, that would be absolutely You could crazy. broadcast it live from the WBC offices. Where are they? <laughs> Look at you just looking for another holiday. <laughs> no, I want to broadcast the purse bid. You can go. Um, <laughs> that would be fun. Mm. We'll all go to that. <laughs> When you were speaking to Coogan, you didn't realise I was 21, did you? No. Well, how did you think I was? 25, 26. Blimey. Yeah, but you look the same age as me. <laughs> what do you not think so? Do you just look young? I don't know, how old do you think I am? Well, what is your age? I'm 26. I was going to say 24, 25. Yeah. So, no, you, 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 you've got a little baby face, haven't you, still? Yeah. yeah, that's why I keep this. <laughs> Just to make me look a bit rugged, like like I'm a bit older. <laughs> How no, old's Eddie? Uh, he's actually, don't tell him, he's 40 in a couple of weeks. It's, not, it's on Wikipedia, I'm sure. Let's have a look, let's just double check. Man. You're going to edit his Wikipedia page? What, to make him 30? Yeah. How old did you think he was? 37. Wikipedia. <clears throat> no, it's on there. Yeah. He's currently 39. 39? I thought he was 37. No. He's he's uh, he's 1.96 metres tall, which is 6 foot 5 inches. That's what it says on here. How many stone? <laughs> don't think Wikipedia's got that info yet. <laughs> uh, not, not just yet. It's not the best picture, though, Wikipedia have used. Have you got that? Yeah. Uh you could have fun just changing these, can you? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Actually, yeah, we haven't even talked about this card in, uh, on Saturday night in Maryland. Maryland? Yeah. Can't wait. The start of the Devon Haney. The dream. The dream. Uh, I can't wait. Can't wait for him. He's one we've been, we've been trying to work for for, a, for quite a while. I was sp speaking to his dad, Bill, for a long time. Mm. And um, looking forward to getting started. And he really fits the design brand as well you know this new new age mm. streaming he, he's the kind of person we wanted to work with so it's great to have him on board he's got a tough test as well and people forget he's 20 years old 20 years old that is crazy yeah the amount of fights he's got you know traveling to mexico to have all those fights early on in his career when he couldn't box in the u.s so he uh although he wants to move very quickly and he, he's shown that you know he wanted he wanted the wbc shot um, I think we, you know, it's our job now to build him and direct him along with 
his team, Devin Haney Promotions, Bill, and everyone to to the right, you know, do it the right way. Mm. So it's it's exciting. He's got a very mature head on him as well. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Really, and he's really nice. Mm. Like nice personality as well, mm. which you don't always find with someone of that age, who has already sort of done what he's done and in the position he's in. Been in the Mayweather gym. Yeah, you normally there's a lot of that. Like, I'm sure he's got the arrogant side of I'm I'm good, I'm the best, and yeah. I'm going to do, which is unique. Well, he said he's the best individual. Yeah, already. which is, but you need that <clears throat> because to to make it. But he's he's actually a nice person, mm. which is which is great. Mm. Clean cut, good image, so it's great. Of course, done a a co promotional deal with the Sounds for Philip Pergovic. Yeah, big heavyweight talent. Massive, isn't he? First time I've actually met him. He, he was quite unit. funny. Not a good, sing, not a great singer. <laughs> Corbin's a better singer. Than him. Um, he's a unit. That's a great fight. You got Michael Hunter, who uh, only loss ever was actually here Usyk. against Usyk, and you know he's he put up a great fight in that one now at heavyweight he's had some good, fight, good fights won the Houston off fight Bacoli. Bacoli. Um so there's some big fights out there for him down the line um, I think he's only had 15 fights or something like that around that sort of number so looking that that would be a great one you've got Jessica McCaskill unification you know, unification it's Anahi Sanchez Danny Ayelusinov's back <coughs> um, so yeah good show just one on Danny uh, mm. Speaking to their team, they're kind of saying, why didn't hasn't he boxed in? I know he's boxed in New York once for his debut, but there's a lot of Kazakhs there. There's a lot of Kazakhs in California, um, and there was a bit, there was questioning why they're on this bill rather than the Golovkin bill, for example, or the, the Joshua bill even. No, look, we we have to plan it around. You know, we've got a hundred fighters, mm. um, and we have to plan his schedule along with our shows. Uh, we tried to get him on the Golovkin bill. Yeah, I thought that New York Kazakh. Yeah, we, we did try to get him on there. Didn't work out for certain reasons. Um, certain reasons. No, I, for whatever. I like. I. I don't know. They came back, um, and they didn't. We just didn't, couldn't get the slot on the okay. show for him. So he's on here. I think the key thing is keeping him active. And also, you know, he's he's sort of had a couple of trainers now. And I think he needs to he needs to really settle in. And we're going to start moving him on now. Like next fight, he's probably going to fight end of July in a ten round fight for some kind of international title. Um, so, you know, he's boxed on he's boxed on a, a, a lot of shows, but it also fits around when the shows come. So mm. if we haven't got a show in LA that he could box on, then. It's just, it's just the case as it is, but mm-hmm. our job is to keep him busy um, and build him, and we will carry on building him. You so. guys obviously got him and Josh Kelly, that's a, a future fight. Yeah, yeah. They've obviously very, fought in the amateurs, yeah. and you loose and I've got that one. Yeah, very interesting fight down the road. Josh Kelly's got a, a tough fight next Ray week against Ray Robinson, so that's um, that's a real step up for him. But he, as well, as, as you say about like Devin Hay, Josh Kelly believes he, he's already one of the best, So, and against that confidence and arrogance you need to really make it. Well, him and Adam Booth are calling for the Khan and Brook fights, mm. aren't they? So. Yeah, so there's a lot of big fights out there. But we've got a great pool of talent now. You know, great, as I say, probably a hundred odd fighters mm. signed now globally. So, it's good. Just the last one. Did you see Kel's tweet the other day? Which one? Okay, up. Um, what is the situation with Kel? Kel, we're working, you know, we. I was with him actually in New York when Khan fought. What's this one? Some people are suggesting he might have left because of that. I don't, I don't know what you can read into that. <laughs> no. Regulatory tangle. No, nothing to do with Al. Okay. But, you know, we're, we're still working with Kel. Um, I think Eddie spoke to Terry, his dad, a couple of days ago. So, yeah, that's nothing. I don't know. <laughs> First I've seen of it. Well, he wants the. Uh, he was out there for Crawford. Come. Yeah, he, he wants, wants Crawford. Crawford fight. It's a big fight for him, and I think he's a good fight for Crawford as well. Mm. What's going on there? Who have you locked in there? <laughs> that's not actually my room. That's oh. one of those connecting doors oh. to the next door. Oh, okay. But, Are you sure? Are you, you haven't should, got someone locked try? in there? Should we try. It? <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if there was someone there? <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so there's a. That, we were, sorry, we we're about to go. That sort of freaked me out, that did. <laughs> um, yeah, we're talking about some big fights for him. So, you know, and we I think we've worked together well. We've delivered some big fights for him. The Errol Spence fight at Sheffield. That was a dream for him to box there. GGG. GGG at the O2, sold out, you know, a massive show as well. So we've worked together well. You know, the. Um, uh, when he boxed in LA when he first won the world title, Sean Porter. Sean Porter. That was another. So, you know, we've had a great relationship with him, and he was one of the first who we started working with along, you know, like Darren Barker, those guys when we first signed. Matthew, remember when he boxed Matthew Hatton? Yes. Back in yeah, Sheffield? Yeah, yeah. At like 9,000 people there. So we've worked Stopped with him for him. a long time. Yeah. So, Kel's, Kel's still a strong part of the team. Okay, Frank Smith, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. We will catch a word in New York next week. Okay, try and get some more questions. I think Coogan might do you next week. Really? Yeah. Got to share it. You got, got to share, share me. Yeah. You got to share me. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. No worries. Thank you.